In a couple of weeks, we will close these 40 days of Easter. During these 40 days of the joy of Easter, the risen Christ Jesus stayed with the 11 apostles before he ascended into heaven. Then, after ascending into heaven, the church prayed the nine novena days for the great feast of Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit upon the church. This is the context for today's gospel. Before the ascension and before Pentecost, Jesus prepares us, his mystical body, to continue his mission of saving the world through his spirit. There are three main points, therefore, in this homily from today's gospel. First, the Holy Spirit reminds us about Christ's teaching through his church. Second, the Holy Spirit protects the Catholic Church from officially teaching error in matters of faith and morality. And third, the Holy Spirit helps us to live official church teachings on faith and morality, especially through the sacraments and personal prayer. So again, the Holy Spirit reminds, the Holy Spirit protects, and the Holy Spirit helps. For the first point that the Holy Spirit reminds us about Christ's teachings through the church, Jesus said, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. In other words, the institution of the church doesn't just have a human element to it, but it has a divine element to it. I mean, think about this. If the church does not have the divine spark of the Holy Spirit, then it's just a mere human institution. And as a human institution only, it will collapse. If the church can make an error in her official teachings, then that means that Christ's mission has failed in some sense. The resurrection will have meant nothing if God's church is teaching darkness and error. And so we need the third person of the Blessed Trinity, the Spirit of God, to teach and remind us of truth. The Spirit of God, then, is active in the official teachings of the church. We hear in the first reading from Acts of the Apostles how the first apostles and elders officially taught. The Greek words here to describe the official teachers were apostoloi and presbyteroi. Presbyteroi is sometimes translated as elders or priests. When there were controversial issues, it was the apostoloi and the presbyteroi who resolved errors through official teachings. So in the Bible, when the church heard that there were some Christians going around without any mandate from them to officially teach, they sent representatives with a letter that boldly said, quote, it is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us. End quote. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us that you must avoid paganism and unlawful marriage. Here, the apostles and their successors have the audacity to dare claim not only the authority of the Holy Spirit, but their own authority as well. The Holy Spirit reminds us through the formal teachings of the apostoloi that he reminds us of Jesus' teachings. In formal teachings like the creed or the liturgy or the catechism or in scripture, so the Holy Spirit reminds us of Christ's teachings through his church. Second, the second main point is that the Holy Spirit protects the Catholic Church from officially teaching error in matters of faith and morality. Throughout our 2,000 year teaching history, the successors or the replacements of those apostles over time through the episcopoi 
handed down a clear body of public declarations. Now, just because the church is protected from teaching error doesn't mean that the members of the church are protected from sin. Peter, Simon, sinned, yet he was the official leader of the church. Also, the protection of the Holy Spirit is on a religious faith matter or a moral issue, and not just whatever they say goes, you know, uh, off to the side or their private opinion. So, for example, political diplomacy by the Holy See or the Vatican or a member of the clergy's personal opinions that they say over dinner with some friends, over a glass of wine and some pasta and caviar, um, these are not protected by the Holy Spirit. But a moral issue like God's, fam- God's plan for marriage and family is a moral issue. And as such, it enjoys the gift of protection from error when it is officially taught by the Catholic Church. The Father sent Jesus. The Holy Spirit is also sent upon the church. So whenever, then, we love the church's teachings, we too then love the Spirit and Jesus and ultimately the Father's teachings. Her teachings are His own. And finally, the Holy Spirit helps us to live Catholic teachings on matters of faith and morality, especially through the sacraments and personal prayer. In the second reading from the book of Revelation, the holy city Jerusalem came down like a bride out of heaven, prepared for her husband, coming down the aisle. The city is the church, the mystical body of Christ. She has no need of sun or moon to shine her, for the glory of God is her lamp. The lamp is the Lamb. Here, the holy city of the church, of which you and I are members through baptism, shines brighter than any sun. The Catholic Church uniquely was granted by her divine founder, Jesus, the means to conquer evil in the world. And you and I know how much evil is running rampant in our world today. No other institution can claim this. In fact, I'm going to depart for a moment here from my prepared text and say, you know, I have friends and relatives who I love dearly that are Protestant Christians. But Protestant Christianity is only 500 years old. And from Protestant Christianity, we have 40,000 different interpretations of the Bible. But the one Catholic Church which which has existed for 2,000 years, from the beginning of time, has the guarantee of protection, a unity of faith that has existed from not only throughout time, but throughout space as well. Of course, while we respect and love those that are in other Protestant denominations, we still call them back home to the Catholic Church from whence they came. The mysteries of faith or the sacraments, like the Eucharist at Sunday Mass, the bread of life, confession, absolution, and forgiveness of our sins by the priest in the confessional, and matrimony, and baptism, and confirmation, all of these will help us assist in living Catholic teaching on faith and morality, especially the difficult teachings, so that we can go home to heaven. And if there is a difficulty, remember that one difficulty with a church teaching, 1,000 difficulties do not make one doubt. Let it, this difficulty be an invitation to renew our faith in the risen and ascended Christ, who said that whoever loves him will keep his teachings. And during this month of May, which is dedicated to the mother of Jesus, let it be an invitation, too, to pray the rosary more, 
especially every day, and to consecrate and entrust our weak and fallen nature to her loving, motherly, immaculate heart, so that we can be better disciples of Jesus. Let it be an opportunity of growth and conversion as we prepare for the ascension of Jesus and the sending of the Spirit at Pentecost. So, in summary, the Holy Spirit reminds us of Christ's teaching through his church. Second, the Holy Spirit protects the Catholic Church from error in matters of faith and morality. And third, the Holy Spirit helps us all to live official church teachings that come from Jesus Christ. God, the Holy Spirit himself, will teach all nations now and until the end of time. O God, let all the nations praise you. Thank you.